Now it's the free people's turn and they've got two event dice left. As it goes, I'm not quite sure what the free people's going to do with those, those two event dice. We could recruit some dwarves. We could separate out the fellowship. But for as long as one player has fewer dice than the other player on their turn, they can actually choose to pass. And I think that's what we'll do. We'll have the free players pass. Okay, They've got two dice. Shadow player's got four dice, so they can choose to pass. And the idea here really is letting shadow player carry on. Let's see, see what they do, and we'll react accordingly. Well, the shadow player is going to use this character die. Now, there's a couple of things I've considered with this character die. With a character die, you can move or attack with an army which has a leader. Now there's this army here in Isengard in Orthanc and Saruman is with this army and he has a leadership of one so that means Saruman counts as a leader and Saruman is in this army. So we could potentially attack the Fords of Isen but I don't want to do that. The problem of attacking here into Rohan is that I'm also kind of helping the Free Peoples player in a way because every time you attack a nation if it's passive then it will be active so this will turn up and also it would move one spot down the political track so I'm helping the free players person get Rohan on their way to war and I don't want to do that just yet so what I'll do instead is I'll use that character action to move not attack with move with and you can only move an army or attack an army with a leader and I'm looking at this army here in Barad, uh, which has a Nazgul. And Nazgul, remember these grey characters, these grey figures, they count as leaders. They have a leadership of one, effectively. And I want to move this army, and I want to move it south into Gulgroth. So using my character die, I can move one army with a leader, one adjacent region. Now this army has combined with these three units that are already in Gorgoroth. So now we've got an army that consists of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven regulars and one elite and one leader. So that's eight units in the army. So the army size is eight. The leader doesn't count. Remember, leaders are just kind of one person amongst this army. Whereas each one of these figures represents, you know, hundreds or thousands of, of peoples. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there's eight units in this army and they're accompanied by a leader all right the maximum that you can have in any one region is 10 so i could potentially on another action move these two from Nern, and that would reach the limit of 10 but i couldn't move say these five from minus morgul in here because that would that would exceed the 10 limit if at any point you do exceed the 10 limit anything any units above that would be removed from the board and they would go to the reinforcements supply okay so that's our character action spent free people's player now gets a choice and i think they'll pass once more we'll go back to the shadow player this time we're going to use this muster an army die but we're going to use it this time not for the muster side but for the army side now you saw on the last action we used a character die to move one army that's controlled by a leader, which is accompanied by a leader. With an army die, you don't have that restriction. You know, the army you're moving doesn't have to have a leader. All right. So an army die kind of acts like the character die, where we can move armies, but it doesn't need a leader. The other difference is when you use the army die in this way, you're not limited to just moving one army, but you can move two different armies. Okay. So that's what we're going to do with this 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 army die. We're going to move two different armies with or without leaders. This one goes off to the side of spent and now I get to pick two armies to move. Now there are some restrictions. Isengard's at war. Isengard's here in this yellow region and you can see that Isengard the one, two, how many regions are in here? I think it's... <coughs> okay that's just... yeah. One, two, three, there's four regions in Isengard here. Now, because they're at war, they're free to move anywhere. They can cross borders. But these guys here, there's two units here in Moria. 
there's Sauron units, and Sauron's not at war yet. And what that means is they could not move into North Dunlan. It doesn't matter whether the border is a friendly border or an enemy border. If you're not at war, you cannot cross borders for stop. Okay? You can cross this border here because this area is not inside the border of another nation. All right? So there are some areas here which you can freely move into because they don't belong to anyone's nations. They're kind of no man's land. So likewise, if I look up here at the northeast, these easterlings here, they could you know, move into these no-man land areas, but they couldn't move across into this dwarven territory or this north territory because, of, because they're not at war. The two nations are going to move our Nern from here to here, and this route takes Gorgoroth up to its 10 unit maximum now. 1, 2, 3, 4... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm going to move these south rounds from near Harand into Umba. Now it's the free people's player's turn. This time they can't pass. They've got two dice. Shadow player has two dice. So they can't choose to pass. They can discard one or they can spend one of these dice. As it goes, I think they're going to use one of these event dice to draw another character card. And we draw the file of Galadriel. And the file of Galadriel special hunt tile is now in play. Add the tile to the hunt pool when the fellowship is on the mortar track. Okay. I might play this. I'll show you next uh, next action. This goes to our hand. Now Shadows player. We have two event dice. And I think we'll use the first to draw draw a card, I think. Yeah, we'll draw a card with the first one. So this goes off to the side. And I think we'll draw a strategy card. And we get the day without dawn. And this says, play if all shadow nations are at war, which they're not, discard all unused free people's actions die that show a will of the West result. Okay. Not so useful for us just yet. Free people's player, and we've got one event die left, and we'll use that, and we'll play this card, and it can be any card because we're using an event die, the file of Galadriel. And what that means is we have to find this hunt token. It's a minus two, it's a blue one. And that works in our favour. These negative numbers are, are negative corruption. Okay, so that makes us less corrupt. All right, but we can't use that token just yet. What we need to do is grab it from the supply. Here it is. Remember, this card tells us add the tile to the hunt pool only when the fellowship is on the Mordor track. And our Mordor track's here underneath this vast army at the moment. <laughs> okay, so what I do is I place this off to the side here, just to remind me that when our fellowship does reach this point, there's going to be a collection of tokens here that are going to build up throughout the course of the game, and when we get here, these are going to get added into the hunt pool. Remember, our hunt pool is this little drawstring bag which has only the the regular, the beige hunt tiles in there at the moment. Okay, so that ends the three people's players' turn, and we'll discard this card. I just paid it face up on the bottom of this deck. And the shadow player's got one die remaining, this event die. And I think we'll spend this and play this monster's roused card. Which says recruit one Sauron regular unit in each of Angmar, Ettenmoors and Weather Hills, and one Sauron elite unit in troll shores. And these are going to come from our supply of recruitments. So we'll grab our three Saron regulars. We'll place one up here in Angmar, which is pretty good because this is undefended at the moment. One at Etten Moors, right nearby. And one at Weather Hills. And finally we take one 
Sauron Elite, and that goes in the Troll Shores. So we've made quite a presence now, up in the north here, near the Shire. Perhaps the Shadow Player ought to be thinking about moving the Sauron Nation to the at war state on the political track. We're currently only one spot away. Right, we can discard this card now, and that will end the actions phase for this turn. There's no more dice left. The only thing left to do on a turn, once you've completed all your actions resolution, is do a quick check on victory. And we know that there's no victory points yet, so you do a quick check on military victory, and if either player has reached victory, then, then the game ends, otherwise we'll just start a new turn. Incidentally, if during a turn at any point a ring victory is reached, so the Fellowship reaches the Crack of Doom, or the Corruption Track reaches 12, then the game immediately ends. You don't wait for the end of the turn. That was turn one. I hope you enjoyed it. Join me next time and we'll crack on with turn two.